All right, so I was wrong about something, like absolutely, completely wrong. I, I was I was stuck in that old school mind frame, man, but I, I'm in a better mind state now. I'm ready to talk about this. I want some nasty. Are we having fun yet? Mr. Malachi Branham. As you guys know, we've talked about him quite a bit. Now, I know the focus has been mostly on Sohan over the last... A uh, few weeks, several weeks, uh, that is. Um, before that, it was it was Josh Primo. But before the season started, okay? Because I know Malachi Branham, I knew he wasn't going to get a lot of minutes, all right? But before the season started, we were talking a lot about Malachi Branham and what he could potentially be. And now, finally, he got his shot. And when he got his shot, he took full advantage of it. This man had 26 points uh, against the 76ers now there's a few things about his game that i absolutely love and i've talked about it before but there's one thing there's one revelation that i've had which i didn't even think about until now so just diving straight into it he had 26 points and he played absolutely phenomenal um, as you can see here 11 for 16 shooting insane three assists two rebounds and a steal now here's the thing all right and let me get this out of the way let me just talk about the positives of malachi's game and then i'll talk about what i was absolutely wrong about okay so malachi branham the one thing that i absolutely love about his game is how he utilizes screens and i've said this before that one of the main reasons i could see for the spurs keeping yaka Pertle would be for malachi branham for the development of the younger players but specifically malachi branham because he is so good around screens okay he just plays them so well he has a knack for the pick and roll he's just absolutely nasty with it okay but i also like his pace uh he's such a good shooter he has such a knack for getting open or having just enough space to let it go that i just i it's just fun to watch it's almost like you're watching a veteran it, it doesn't feel like he's as young as he is but he did the same thing in ohio in which he just played like he was a seasoned veteran and it's, it's, it's amazing to see now i won't go through all the stories that we've already went through before in previous videos about how much or how hard he works how he started off playing basketball and he was absolutely trash like some guys start off and they already have a little bit of talent you can see it not uh, Malachi he was absolutely trash okay according to his trainer according to him he was garbage so he really had to work to create this skill and he had, had to work to uh, up his talent but overall it, like he he just really went at it so he's a super hard worker gym rat I mean we're talking Kawhi Leonard level of gym rat okay now won't talk about all that but what I will talk about is what I was absolutely wrong about and what I was wrong about is that I kept saying that the San Antonio Spurs, what we'll have to do more than likely, especially with Primo being gone now, I said, we're gonna have to lose this season. Hopefully, it's just pray to the basketball guys that we get Victor Wimbanyama, and then we'll probably have to lose some more and get another, another player, and then we can finally have a couple superstars. I'm over that. I'm absolutely over that because I just realized, and, and it's my fault, okay? And a lot of people have called me out on this before, but I will acknowledge it, I was wrong because i was thinking about that old school mentality the fact that you need at least three stars on a team to be successful not necessarily true i just went back and i looked at some of the recent championships in the nba actually i'll just bring that up for you like nba team championships let's see uh actually maybe i did that wrong no i didn't all right so if you scroll down here Let's see, over the last few years, let's see. So we got the Golden State Warriors who just won. They have one superstar. Uh, Clay Thompson is not who he used to be. Don't get me wrong, the camaraderie of the team is really helpful for them, but Boston Celtics have more talent as far as like star power, I think. They just have more talent, right? Um, but the Golden State Warriors, um, they have one superstar. And then, you know, supporting pieces. Uh, Milwaukee Bucks, exact same thing. You got your boy Giannis. And then, I mean, are we really going to say Middleton is a superstar? No, he's good enough to be like, you can call him a star, right? He's he's an all-star. Like, you can call him that. But that, that's, that's as far as you can really go, right? And then if you look at True Holiday, True Holiday is more so of a DeJounte 
Murray build, right? A little bit older, but Jonte Murray build. Yeah, it's a yeah, star, probably not necessarily, but he fits perfectly for what they do. Okay, so that that that's a prime example. Even Los Angeles Lakers. Now that one, you have two superstars and LeBron James and AD, but everyone talks about how that's the you know the Mickey Mouse ring, right? Right. But if you look Miami Heat, they were there as well. Superstars? Eh, not not necessarily. Um, but they were they were at least there. Uh, Toronto Raptors. You had your superstar with uh, Kawhi Leonard and mostly supporting piece. Don't get me wrong, Flam Flam Fleet, Fred Flam Fleet did a phenomenal job, right? Uh, along with Kyle uh, Lowry, all those guys did really well. And and don't get me wrong, they they have a lot of good pieces and, and upcoming talent uh, when they won this championship. But as far as who's the star, superstar, it was it was it was Kawhi. Um, and we won't talk about this because this this is the uh, super teams. But if we're thinking about a ideal future in which we don't have to worry about super teams, uh, that that's what it would look like. We could literally have. Uh, Victor Wimbanyama, which is our superstar, right? You can have Malachi Branham, who could potentially be a superstar, but right now I'll just say star. You can put him at point guard. You look at uh, Jeremy Sohan, he is really, really good. And then Dom Barlow, uh, eventually he will uh, grow into what he becomes. Blake Wesley would grow into what he becomes. Um, I, I personally could see Blake Wesley coming off the bench as like a spark plug uh, off the bench, but that's just me. I, I could be wrong. Um, but we just have a really good setup, I think. And I just wasn't thinking about Malachi Branham and how important he could be uh, going forward. He, he just he just went to the back of my head because at this point of the season, it's just been nonstop me just watching Josh Richardson get more minutes than him, nonstop watching um, all these different, all these other players get more minutes than him. But now we finally get to see Malachi Branham in his full glory. And yeah, he he's he's more than we thought all right he's he's awesome so i'm just thinking about that for the future i'm not basing off of just this game it's just i had that revelation which i'm really dumb for not thinking about it before but like i i just didn't think about how awesome it would actually be if we were able to make this thing work you get win by yama we'll probably still be a fairly bad team but you don't have to tank and that's my that was my take before that after this season we will still probably need to tank that's not necessarily true, all right? And we can get some more pieces in uh, the upcoming drafts. This draft in particular, and we're gonna start doing videos on it maybe in the next couple of months, um, but this draft in particular is has a really good talent, by the way. So if the Spurs can get one more first round pick for uh, this season or 2023, oh my goodness. So I don't know, sorry guys, I'm just excited. I'm, I ramble, I ramble for way too long. I'll give it to you guys later. If you wanna support the channel, clanthemerchfan.com. Until next time, bye.